Good evening. This is Will Neanderthal, coming with Neolithic News. We come today with several gripping stories about agricultural and migrations. A segment on art, and we take you all the way down to Mesoamerica. But now we take you live to describe a fire over to you, camera one. We have small stick for when you need to kill little squirrel rabbit. It work very well as I show. That too small. Now medium stick. Stab ground good. It also very small. Pitiful. Only kill small deer. We bring you the stick plus. It is like the smaller U stick two, but it is now U stick plus. It is big. It kill woolly mammoth. intriguing story tonight, a dangerous revolution happening all over the globe. This revolution has a possibility to impact the entire world. We bring you to camera one. Welcome to one of the scenes of the agricultural revolution. So what prompted you guys to start this dangerous revolution? Well, we got sick and tired of hunting. And we just wanted to relax a little more and really, you know, get back down to earth, if you know what I mean, man. Like, connect with nature. And I think that, you know, this way of life provides us to do that. We're, we're able to spend more time at home with the kids, larger families, you know, more stuff to do. And, uh, and so, by doing this, it's just like, given back to nature and then it's given back to yourself and that's just like philosophies right there I mean you know equal rights and stuff with the with the earth we aren't any better than it we should start respecting it more Wow that was inspiring back to you will welcome to our daily segment art hour to you camera three please explain your drawing well I just think that a drawing such as this one deserves to be respected because obviously the author or the painter who did this was not mainstream. I mean, look at how he depicts this human. Very long legs, very muscular, indicating that he was a runner. Over here, we have this analyzation. He is going in the bow-drawn position. The bow-drawn position is very very helpful for shooting the deer that they obviously have. And notice how they have the elk with the antlers and the elk without the antlers, showing that they don't discriminate between gender here. There's really nothing that 
is being discriminated against. Over here you see someone lunging and shooting the elk or the deer. It does not specify which one because I can't depict the little things on the hooves. But, you know, it shows that from old to medium to young, all these people are shooting all these deer or elk. I mean, you really just can't tell with this picture, but obviously it shows that the people that lived in this area loved to hunt and they loved to eat. So that would also explain the muscularity in their legs because as you eat more, more protein's going into your diet. And obviously, they're getting a lot of cardio when they're running off after these deer, you know? So I think that probably they killed, you know, at least one, two, three, looks like they got that guy in the butt, four. Uh, they have at least four deer here that they killed. So they'll probably go home and drink some herbal tea and then just like relax because they did their work and they deserve to, you know, relax. So that's what I really think is going on in this picture. He's showing the rebellion against the, uh, against how mainstream all the other cave people are, you know, and then he doesn't discriminate. So he's just, he's super, it's just a super drawing. And I see so many metaphors in here. Oh, that was great. Thank you. Now to our sports correspondent. Yeah. Hello. Today, we're going to be looking at the Mayan ball game. Now, I don't know what's happening, but evidently there's a lot on the line today. Now, it seems to be some sort of religious ceremony or something. Now, I don't know much, but here, we'll watch the game first. Now, the gentlemen, right now, in the game of the sky, background information. Instead of sending two troops to war, sometimes the Mesoamerican people would send ball teams to battle each other on the courts instead. Now, I don't know how this game ends, but I mean, we're going to find out, but evidently it stopped wars. Oh my, oh, this man seems to have won. Now, what's going to happen to the loser now? Well, I don't know what's happening, but they seem to be enjoying the after festivities. Let's see what'll happen. Oh, what, what, what? Oh, oh my, that's what they're doing? Wow, that was gruesome. Now to our new segment, Ironology. Brought to you by the Bantu Migrations. Watch a ride it show. Carpio! Sometimes I'm back and some of them are rally back. We are road boy, you tell me not take back. Thank you for being with us, local blacksmith. So what are these tools used for? Well, we have the weapons on this side and the more tools on this side. Right here, here's a, a regular um, warrior's sword. Iron. Very heavy, but very good weapon. Here's a little bit smaller sword used for generals and stuff, and it's very sharp. Here's its sheath. Here's a machete, good for good for a weapon and very good for tools like ch um, chopping down long grasses and stuff. I have two hatchets, good for chopping down small trees and shrubs, and could also be used for weapons, but more tools, less tools. And knives, good for tools, and good for as a secondary weapon. Executing people that disobeyed Hammer Rabbi's code used to be very bad. But now, thanks to Iron Metallurgy, it's virtually painful. Thanks, Iron Metallurgy. Oh, that was a great word from my sponsor. Same. Now, to it. Peter with the Chinese citizen. Larry, she got you. <laughs> How do you feel about writing? Well, I think it's very good development. And, and I start writing because sometimes I go to store to find rice, but I forget because I try to find chicken or duck, and it's hard to find how I'm supposed to make duck with rice if, if I don't find rice because I'm so interested in finding duck. You know? I see. Very touching. How do you feel about long-term writing? I see writing as 
long-term development because in long term people might use writing because I go to fortune teller and and I say fortune teller how will my dog feel like in several years and he says your dog will get very sick after he consult Oracle bones I take dog to vet and dog all better he no longer you know last only several months but he lasts long term and that is enjoyment for whole family another example is I try and make this great Kung Pao chicken, great Kung Pao chicken, and I want my family to experience the Kung Pao chicken just like I experience Kung Pao chicken. So I make book of recipes, and these recipes get passed down from generation to generation just like in the book of songs, you know? Instead of singing, they make my Kung Pao chicken, and it tastes very, very good. So that is just several examples of how I see writing as long-term development, you know? Sometimes I back and some of them are rally back We a road boy, you tell me not take back the chat Sometimes I back and some of them are rally back but we... No. Go over. <laughs> what are you doing? Go over. Okay. No. Gavin, are you saying anything or are you saying Yeah.